Hey everybody and welcome back to Jay's Retro Reactions. Today we're going to be reacting to episode 4 of season 1 of Buck Rogers, which is The Plot to Kill a City, part 1. No, nothing, absolutely nothing about this episode, barely even remember it. But I am actually really looking forward to watching Buck Rogers again. I'm really enjoying this dive back into my childhood and this 70s sci-fi. It's very funny, very cheesy, and it makes me laugh out loud, and that's all I care about, even if some of the acting and the costumes and the storylines aren't the best in cinema, but who cares? This was purely made for entertainment purposes, and it delivers 100% on that front. So I hope you join me for this episode, and let's get on with the show. Welcome to my party, we're just getting started, a life is a dream or a nightmare starring. And here we have Buck checking into a nightclub where again 70s probe music or disco music seems to be the only music that has survived into the future. <laughs> and Buck eyes not one, but two ladies he's gonna make a move on. Hi. Come here often. <laughs> Great line, Buck. Plus <laughs> you change your tune when you've seen that lady pretty quickly. What an alien. Raphael Argus here was about to become a member of the League of Interstellar Mercenaries. Not the League of Interstellar Mercenaries. Mm, I see. Then of his buddies have it in for you and the director because you wasted him, huh? So don't tell me Buck's job is going to be to infiltrate this legion of interstellar mercenaries and find out their, their dastardly plot to execute whatever politicians they're going to execute. Buck, I realize you have this capture, Marcos. I appreciate it very much. If you'd like to end it there, then... Sure, I'll help. I told you Buck is going to go undercover impersonating the dude. I said it, didn't I? All these people have gathered together in one place, so we can only assume that the subject of their discussions is of staggering proportions. So the legion of interstellar mercenaries is going to gather in one spot and be assassinated themselves? Very nice. See if you think so after you meet her. <laughs> she is very nice, Buck. She's an empath, almost telepathic in her ability to pick up on people's emotions. Okay, so the four leaders of the legion of interstellar mercenaries we have one guy who's a telepathic powers. We have another guy who's a brilliant strategist. We have the next guy who's had all these nerve endings severed so he doesn't feel pain and basically can fight on. And then we have the third or the final lady who's uh, an empath and can sense emotions. So it's going to be difficult for Buck to get in there and do his job with all these differing abilities he's going to have to overcome. <laughs> Now I do recognize this guy, again he's one of those people you would see pop up as a bad guy over and over again in 70s and 80s movies and TV shows. He's got a unique face, distinct face, so it's not someone you'd forget. And here's the empathic lady. You can do her empath stuff over me anytime. Fine looking woman. Somebody I know is in this room. Right now, because Buck is going to turn up. I recognize this lady in red as well. She's someone I, I just remember from back in the day on TV shows and stuff again. Again, if anyone knows the actor who's the telepath or this lady in red's name, please let me know in the comments. You know Raphael Argus, don't you? Well, he's going to be in port tomorrow. And that's Wilma. Wilma's undercover as well. Looking nice with her black wig. <laughs> Definitely caught the eye Mr. Telepath here. <laughs> and a nice high cut dress there for Wilma. We've reprogrammed the computer in Argus's ship so that it responds to your voice. And remember to try to use those items on your belt sparingly. So Buck has got his Batman utility belt yet again with more gadgets. What gadgets is he going to have for this episode? Cheer up, Doc. I'm not dead yet. Yet being the operative word, Buck. Although the doctor's not giving you much hope, is he? Hi. How are you? All fueled up and ready to serve you, Rafe. I love how all the computers in the in the future, according to Buck Rogers, are programmed to be highly sexualized female voices who use innuendo over and over again with double entendres. I'm all in favour. 
Engage, definitely, lady. Or not, but I think you are the sexiest onboard computer I've ever known. Why, thank you, honey. Buck knows how to chat up a computer. There's no doubt about that. He's showing off his skills here. You have been identified as Raphael Argus of Altair 5. Prepare for boarding. No, our starfighter is actually the Earth ships, and they mistakenly think Buck is the mercenary dude. But surely the Doctor and co would have told Earth Defences not to go after Buck? Like, would not be just a basic mission setup parameter? You don't have to be anywhere real soon, do you, Rafe, honey? As a matter of fact, I do. So he's been captured by a tractor beam brought to the nearest police station or interstellar police station. Mr. Kellogg. Wits. And here's the strategist dude from the... Legion of Interstellar Mercenaries. Forgive him for not meeting him face to face, but... And the nerveless dude, who had all his nerve ends cut. Looking all Phantom of Opera style with his mask there. He's a mutation. A human mutation. My people were human. Oh, he's a mutant. Good. Can never have enough mutants in 70 sci-fi. A wretched creature that... And what, he can walk through walls? That's his mutant superpower? No, Dr. Buck and I have not rendezvoused. He hasn't arrived yet. We can only assume he was intercepted. Exactly, Doctor, because you didn't do your job and inform Earth's defenses to let him through. Your equipment will circumvent them, but it will require a direct line of sight and that could be dangerous. Good luck, Colonel. The Doctor keeps wishing Wilma and Buck good luck, but he's doing nothing to help them. In fact, he's actively hindering him. Going back to an earlier episode where it turned out the robot doctors are actually doing all the work for the human doctors, the human doctors were just taking credit. It's very apparent here that the doctor needs Dr. Theo, the robot doctor, to come up with a bloody sensible plan for him. Look, I have a very important meeting to attend. Couldn't we just... No, you can't, Buck. You're stuck behind the energy shield, man. They don't care. And it looks like they've put you in with a 16th century pirate. Bernard Smith is my name. My friends call me... I recognize this guy as well. He was in loads of stuff in the 70s and 80s. Someone again, please let me know this actor's name if they know in the comments. He tried to have psychic commune with me! Ah! He's out of his mind. I never touched him. Okay. <laughs> so this guy is claiming to get the guards distracted that Buck tried to psychically rape him. Lovely. I got his gun. Come on, Barney. Come on. <laughs> okay. Whatever, Buck. True. Just put everyone on an acid trip, including the viewers. Oh, Ray, you're still alive. Well, I won't be long if you don't get us out of here fast. <laughs> here we have the sexy robot computer welcoming Buck back in a very seductive manner. I was going to say that that spaceport opening on the ship looks very like... Uh, a woman's private part, shall we say. I wonder was that done on purpose? It wouldn't surprise me with this show. And here we have Wilma looking fine again, as I said, in the high cut dress and the black wig. I usually prefer my women with dark hair, but in fairness, I will say I think Wilma looks better as a blonde. Is it true what they say about telekinetics? And what's that? Yeah, what do they say about telekinetics? I suppose he doesn't need Viagra because his telepathic powers will always raise it up. Maybe that's what they say. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys, and what they say about telekinetics. Let me fix you something. Moro Hypno. I bet you Royal Man's going to fix him up with Moro Hypno. It wouldn't be a Buck Rogers episode without the usage of Ro Hypno at some stage. Young thing like you. Doing with a subspace transmitter in a closet. What are you doing? Yes, we just had the use of Rohypnol, this time in injectable form. Who called this meeting? Oh, Kellogg. Uh, Kellogg called it. <laughs> oh, it's a true drug like they gave the dude in the last episode, not Rohypnol. Hey, look, why do you want to talk so much when we... Because I find you so disgusting and so repugnant. Yeah, more true drug. The guy's still too horny. Now, I want you to close your eyes. And when you wake up tomorrow morning... See? I was wrong. It was Rohypnol. I should have stuck to my original idea. It wasn't a truth dog. It was Rohypnol. Truth dog? Truth drug. 
Irish people ain't good at pronouncing ours. Government regulations prohibit the transport of subhumanoid life forms to Aldebaran. So it seems like we have a class system in the future because they're talking about subhumanoid life forms. So there is subhumans. Great. Now, Mr. Argus, if that is who you are. Well, that's the empath taken care of. How did these other three figure out that Buck wasn't a real mercenary guy? There's the telepath guy just sucking away Buck's gun again. Just go and grab the empath's gun. Oh no, we've got mutant nerve damage guy who Buck can't kick because he phases in and out of reality. Greetings, Mr. Argus. Okay, so they haven't figured it out. It was just some sort of test for the real mercenary guy. By the way, there's an old friend of yours waiting for you back at the hotel. Joella Cameron. Sound familiar? No, it doesn't. Imagine trying to chat up an, uh, a lady who is really empathic. It'd be impossible. She'd know your every intention before you even tried anything. We can wait for Argus's acquaintance to arrive. I, for one, love to watch reunions of old friends. When she says a reunion of old friends, what exactly is she expecting Buck to do to this lady when she turns up? Why do you let him treat you like that? I deserve my better. Why would you say something like that? Because he's a mutant, and mutants are treated like dirt. Is Raphael here yet? Joella! It's been a while. Is Joella gonna go along with Buck's ruse here? We didn't part under the best of terms. But give me a chance, will you? Got deal, right? And she is. I think she likes to look at Buck the way she just walked up and started snogging him there. You're satisfied? But Don't tell me Buck is gonna have to rescue this girl as well, like the lady he had to rescue in the last episode. Is she gonna end up living in his apartment as well? Like Tanji? Trying to fool Charisse and her friends, that's risky enough, but uh, how do you know I won't blow your cover? Because you want something, girl, and I just need to figure out what you want. Oh! Where do I find you again? Uh, downstairs in the bar. I'll be around. That's where all the classy ladies hang out, Buck. Downstairs in the bar. Do you not know this, man? Marcos is anything at all. He's punctual. I try. Oh, so this is the nerve damage, dude. It's not the mutant guy. Argos. Rafael Argos. <laughs> well, not just up on the, the staircase with a very inconspicuous listening device. I would have thought the future would have done something better than that. We're being observed. Observed? Are you sure? Positive. Where? Up there. So smart of Buck to say he would go after Wilma. Unfortunately, he's got this painless dude with him. The guy who cut all these nerve endings so he couldn't feel pain. <laughs> Well, that fooled him easy enough. Fair play to you, Wilma. Oh no! Foiled by a sticky up out thing in the floor. Ah. Uh -oh. Exactly. He feels no pain, Buck. Stupid move. But we've got another acid trip bomb, so it's fine. Buck, we can't go back to Earth without knowing how they're going to destroy New Chicago. I was afraid you were going to say that. So he said they're not going to use nukes, so why are they going to use bacterial, chemical, biological weapons? I don't know. If I'm not there by 1500 hours, you leave without me, you understand? You hear? Always time for another snug. Always. Buck always makes that time. Fair play to him. Nighty night. <sighs> If he's got no nerves, how did she just do a nerve pinch on him to get him on the ship and then put him out? Plot hole, maybe? Well, I'm a friend of Argus, and uh, he told me to meet him here. Rafe would never do that without telling me. This robot woman's jealous. <clears throat> I do the warming up around here, sweetie. She sure does, Wilma, and don't you forget it. That lady's in charge of that ship. End of. The woman was a member of the Earth's Defense Directorate. She killed Marcos before I could kill her. Again, quite stupid of this super secretive Legion of Death mercenary group to allow this new guy in and all their plans just because he has a reputation and managed to what? Avoid being killed by them when they met him? Doesn't sound that secure to me, to be honest. To destroy a city that large, you need an earthquake or a, a tidal wave. 
or an antimatter explosion. Now where are you going to get this antimatter from, Guy? New Chicago receives its power from a contraterrene generating plant located in the wasteland outside the city. Doesn't sound like the safest of power generation techniques, to be honest. If it can be that easily exploited and blow up everything within 200 kilometers. We can't know the after effects of such a large antimatter explosion. The area could be uninhabitable for centuries. So the Phantom of the Opera guy has concerns about the impact on the environment and the long-term devastation of the planet and the area around it from the explosion given what happened to his people. Well, <clears throat> in that case, I have a protracted goodbye to deliver to someone. Joella. <laughs> Buck's on his way back to Joella, no doubt. Just doing a little home repair, sweetie. You little yeah. That's one way of dealing with your woman rival, Wilma. Rip out her circuit board. Buck, where are you? Buck's coming. He has to just check in on Joella and bring her back to the harem that's growing in his apartment first. Hi, I was wondering where you were. Joella, we have got to get off planet right now. Wait a minute. I don't have time to explain. Let's go. Exactly. You just have to come and join my harem with Tanji from episode three. End of story, Joella. Good. Can't we talk this over? No, you can't, Buck. Tell the bad guy he's gonna lift you into the air. I heard of being light on your feet, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> yes, Buck, it is ridiculous that you're that light on your feet. Buck, don't you dare get yourself killed. Ah, Will McCares knew it all along. She's still leaving without him, though. All right, Kellogg, what's the idea of having Porky and Baby Doll here kidnap us? Porky and Baby Doll. I like the nicknames book. Very apt. Been approached by a, a local informant to believe you met him. Ah, our Turkish 16th century pirate. I knew you couldn't trust this guy. And it looks like we have to wait till the ne next episode to find out what actually is going to happen to Buck and does he weasel his way out of this. Hey everybody and welcome back. That's the end of part one of the episode four of season one entitled A Plot to Kill a City. So in this episode we've seen Buck having to go undercover as a mercenary to infiltrate the Legion of Death Mer Interstellar Mercenaries, excuse me, I don't want to get their full title wrong. Their plan is to blow up New Chicago, a city of 10 million people, caught by creating an antimatter explosion using the power generation plant that fuels New Chicago. Their reason for doing it, it's quite flimsy, it's basically because Earth security forces killed one of their group and they want major revenge. And Buck is up against an empath lady, a telepath guy, a seemingly genius strategist and a guy with no nerve endings but who somehow Wilma was able to put in a nerve pinch hold and then knock him out using a nerve pinch so anyway let's ignore that and move on. Buck met another young lady called Joelle who assisted him with his cover and he is probably going to have to take her off planet and put her back in his apartment with Tanji from episode 3 and as I mentioned he's ever growing harem continues to grow. We also seen Wilma left Buck stranded and he was captured at the end there. So what did I think of this episode guys? I would probably put it at around a 6 out of 10. It's not the strongest episode so far but it is a two-parter and the story is really just starting to get going. We've seen the use of Rohypnol again. It never gets old. Every episode they love wheeling out their Rohypnol and it is a 70s show so no surprise there. Totally socially acceptable it seems back then. Again the ladies continue to wear fashion outfits I'm highly supportive of and the music unfortunately is still 70s disco uh, that survives 500 years into the future. So that's really all I have to say about this episode guys. I'd really love to hear your thoughts and comments on it. As I said I recognised a lot of the guest stars faces not their names because I was looking at the credits at the start but yeah I definitely recognise at least three other faces. Joella's face I recognise, the telepath guy's face I recognise, the strategist guy's face I recognise. So yeah, if anyone knows who they, who they are, please let me know in the comments. That's all for me, folks. I don't really have anything else to say in this. Please join me for part two, episode five of A Plot to Kill a City in the next Buck Rogers video. Until then, take care of yourselves, take care of your families, and God bless to you all. Bye for now. <laughs>